PathMonk is the intelligent tool for website lead generation. With increasing online competition, over 98% of website visitors don't convert. The ability to successfully show your value proposition and support visitors in their buying journey separates you from the competition online. PathMonk qualifies and converts leads on your website by figuring out where they are in the buying journey and influencing them in key decision moments with relevant micro experiences like case studies, intro videos, and much more. Stay relevant to your visitors and increase conversions by 50%. Add PathMonk to your website in seconds. Let the AI do all the work and get access to 50% more qualified leads while you keep doing marketing and sales as usual. Check us on pathmonk.com. Welcome to today's episode. Let's talk about today's guest. Uh, we have Philip from Lucid Green, head of marketing out there with them. How are you doing today, Philip? Hey, Ernesto. I'm very good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's good to have you on today's show. Uh, you know, excited to learn what, what Lucid Green is all about. Uh, got a little bit of of an introduction uh, before the episode, so so our listeners could get a better understanding. Uh, in your own words, can you tell us what Lucid Green is all about? Of course, with the pleasure. Uh, well, uh, it's a game changer. It's a whole revolution happening. Uh, well, you know, joke aside, seriously, uh, at Lucid Green, we're making waves in the cannabis industry, and uh, that's what gets me excited every day because the impact is real. You don't often see a company uh, stepping in with a product or a service in this case that fits perfectly into a gap uh, which exists in the cannabis space. Um, I often say it's pretty much, you know, with the, uh, 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 with, as, as, as you have the analogy, like you have a headache, we have a pill to make it disappear. Quick, no side effects. Um, and the cool part is, you know, in our case, this magic pill takes care of multiple pains and challenges that, again, exist in the cannabis industry. So... In the world of marketing, it's uh, it's a bit tricky because explaining everything we do can be a mouthful, uh, basically because we're streamlining the whole supply chain process. And uh, with that, we're tackling a lot of issues like uh, redundant human resources, uh, incremental costs, uh, errors that are caused by over-regulation in the cannabis industry. So by using technology, we uh, simplify and streamline the journey uh, from creating a product to getting it to the shelves, you know, and the entire route to market. And on that journey, we're offering a bunch of extra perks for everyone involved. Again, whether it's a brand that makes cannabis products, whether it's a distributor or retail. So, you know, that's pretty much, you know, the um, the overview of the, the, the technology. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not done. As you know, as a marketer, we, we really like to talk. And almost, you know, you don't, you don't ever have a full story told, but um, the other side of the technology is the, the consumer side. So what I explained previously was on the B2B. The B2C side, you know, we're also rocking, you know, the consumer marketing um, uh, angle of the cannabis space. So um, it's, uh, in cannabis, it's all about transparency. You know, it's an industry that's very much stigmatized, it's demonized, and a lot of people do not really believe or do not really even understand what cannabis products are all about. So with the application that we are offering on the market, uh, consumers can check and uh, authenticate the product. You know, they can learn about the ingredients. They can learn about how to enjoy it safely and maybe even join the loyalty program if the brand offers. Um, and, you know, guess what ties all of this together? Our smart QR codes that we call Lucid IDs. Uh, the beauty of these QR codes is that, and actually, actually this is the uniqueness. They are like a serial number on a dollar bill. They are unique for every single item. So imagine the possibilities for companies from tracking and tracing to understanding, um, you know, speed of sales, managing inventory and so on and so on. And pretty exciting stuff, man. Well, that's, that's great to hear, right? I mean, I think it's the first time we've had someone on, on here, uh, based on this industry. So, but so that way our listeners can get a good understanding that if, if you were to hone it down on one key problem or problems that. Like Mm -hmm. What do you for your clients then? Well, for the time being, we're dedicated to servicing the cannabis industry, as I mentioned. But uh, our technology isn't just limited to that. It's uh, it's really genuinely versatile and it's applicable across uh, a lot of industries. In fact, let me put it this way. I'm going to step back a bit. Um, I would say that it's it's the next evolutionary step of barcodes. You know, you know those barcodes in every product we buy, right? And They've been around for probably 60 to 70 years. 
uh, and they've been created to identify a, a SKU, a stock keeping unit, right? During the selling process, a process from uh, selling and sell out perspective. And they, they've been doing a great job. You know, they, they serve the purpose even in today's world, but they fall short. Why is that? Because they're one dimensional. And with that, they offer limited information. So the barcodes, they have the bars and they have the digits. That's it. They can recognize a product, a SKU. So enter the smart dynamic uh, QR codes. One of the blessings, you know, if I can put it that way from COVID was that everybody understood what a QR code is. You know, you cannot uh, go into a restaurant without, uh, you know, noticing one. Um, so for people who don't really know what QR codes are, they are two-dimensional, opposite to the regular barcode. And with that, they can carry a wealth of information. So what's more even more impressive is that this information in our case can be changed on the fly. As I mentioned earlier, you know, this is a game changer for the cannabis industry, um, but also can be a boom for many others. This, this, this awareness of these QR codes not only streamline processes, they also enhance collaboration among different players in the route to market. This is really important for any industry. So my point is once we tackle the challenges in the cannabis space and we prove the effectiveness of the technology, the, the possibilities are, you know, endless. So the sky's the limit afterwards. Awesome. Great. I think that, that was going to be probably my, my, one of my follow-up questions to you. Is there an industry that you guys would like to go into? But I, I think like you mentioned, right, the sky's the limit once, once you tackle the, the cannabis, uh, and, and, and everybody could join, right? I mean, it's, it's a, it, it's an interesting thing. And like you mentioned, barcodes have been along for so long. That I don't think it, I don't think uh, I talk to anybody about revolutionizing it, right? So that's that's an right. interesting way of tackling it. We've been already approached by other uh, you know big companies, multinational companies, to be really honest. Uh, but we really want to be wise with how we scale and develop our business going forward. Um, and uh, I think again, because this is such a big change management, we really want to apply this technology in the cannabis space because. That industry is in its uh, inception. To go into a company such as Coca-Cola, that would require an enormous change management. So, you know, again, this is baby steps taking, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, testing, learning, because we don't have a perfect product. We're a startup. We're upgrading and in evolving on the go. So once we, as I said, you know, uh, we are confident that we have solve most of the products in the uh, problems in the cannabis space and we're confident with our product we can definitely go out there and see what other industry is ready for something that's you know that could be um applicable in the supply chain awesome yeah good way that's a great way to look at it well in, in talking about some marketing efforts with you philip you being the, the head of marketing there how, how do you get those people in the door right what, what is your top line acquisition channel look for you guys yeah, that's a, that's an interesting question. But uh, before diving straight into it, I would probably it would be probably better if I just tried to paint a picture of what navigating into the marketing landscape in cannabis uh, looks like. Uh, the fact is that it's not federally legal. I think that I mentioned this. So what does this mean in real life? It's it's really a jungle. I'm going to say it that way. It's a lot of restrictions. It's a lot of limitation when it comes to marketing and communication. And in this environment, you can forget about conventional marketing methods. This is not anything like the CPG world. So pretty much, you know, you, you got to reinvent the wheel. And in my case, I'm trying to leverage, you know, skills and experience from my previous, uh, you know, career because I've been part of um, the CPG world for many years. And I try to uh, I identify what tactics, what experience, you know, can be applied. But as I said, also learn about the industry and learn about technology and make a blend of science and art. Um, so, so you can, you can be relevant. Relevance is, is the name, is the name, uh, is, is an, probably the most important component of the ingredient because cannabis is, um, a combination of a folklore is combination of lifestyle is combination, you know, of technology of many rules. So you need to be very meaningful with what you're communicating. Um, and there's a twist because we serve the industry. We're thrown into the mix, you know, as a so-called tier two company, which makes us almost as, uh, as equal as a cannabis company. Even though we don't touch products, we're not a cannabis company, the same restrictions apply to us. And given this hurdles, you know, we haven't relied on inbound marketing. I think that a lot of your audience can resonate with that. 
So I think there's, as I mentioned, you know, creating meaningful content, relevant content through like podcasts, such as this one with you now, you know, various blogs, utilizing social media as a superpower and believe it or not, Ernesto, the word of mouth is, is really important. It's a big deal in the cannabis space. So we've had countless people, you know, reaching out because they've heard about the, uh, the impact that we're making through the lucid ideas and, you know, our general technology from other companies. And I think that it's a testament to the fantastic product that we have and the impact we're making overall. Definitely. And like you mentioned, it's, it's, it's got to have that, 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 well, I will look at it as a gray area, right? You got to keep on, on form with that, but I'm sure with, with other industries, it, it will change, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Well, the, Ed, so I am here on your website, um, lucidgreen.io. So what role would, would the website play for, for client acquisition? Oh, huge, really, really big, important role. Uh, I would even say that our website is our stronghold. Um, I, but see it as a repository of different, uh, useful content. Uh, honestly, when we, when we tackled the design, uh, that the, the design strategy was, uh, threefold. Firstly, I wanted to clearly articulate what we do, because that's very challenging uh, as we, you know, scale across the B2B and the B2C at the same time. We are across the entire journey of the, of the supply chain. So that was number one. Then second, um, we, we had to offer educational insights into the cannabis industry, because as I said, information, education is key for an industry that is in its inception. And I think that last but not least, uh, driving acquisition. That's ultimately, uh, any, any company's, uh, objective. So it's not just a di digital space. It's a strategic hub. You know, it's designed to inform and educate and ultimately, as I said, bring users into the fold. Wow. Okay. Awesome. Very great. I mean, that's what it, what it's there for. So great to hear that, but let's switch gears a little bit, Philip, and talk about you as a leader. What are some key tasks you focus on your day-to-day -day work? Hey, okay. Well, as. You know, as any marketing uh, expert, um, as I previously mentioned, you, you need to provide meaningful information. Uh, you need to be you need to be uh, relevant for uh, your team. You need to be relevant, you know, for the external environment. So you've got to remember at the same time it's a startup, and in this world you wear more hats than you can count. The, the with that, you know, the job description is uh, like a shapeshifter. <laughs> it's not fixed. It's not stable. Sure, you, you, you've got some regular tasks, you know, on the plate. So pretty much in my case, I would, you know, catch up with my uh, PR team. Uh, I would uh, coordinate with my, with my design maestro, who, by the way, fun fact, used to be on my team a decade ago, back when I was in Coca-Cola in Serbia. And, uh, you know, naturally, I have a lot of meetings with current and uh, prospective clients, you know, diving deep into our DTC platform, which we call Lucid Connect. Um, so that's, that's what it looks like, but you know, here's the, the real one. We, as a marketing team, um, I really consider us to be the, the, the backstage crew in the company, making sure that our colleagues in other departments are enabled to do their job better, to be more effective in, you know, there's the sales speech, you know, in the client success management, uh, to avoid repetition. So it's really about synergizing across the entire team. Awesome. Well, I mean, like you mentioned, I think in, in startups, you got to change your hats every single day and, and, and any time of the day. So, uh, looks like you have a full plate on your hands there. Yeah. Uh, well, let's jump into the section. I know our listeners like listening to it to get a better understanding of you and the company. And it's our rapid fire question section. So you, are you ready for them, Philip? Yes, sir. Awesome. All right. First off, Philip, but what is the last book that you read? The last book that uh, I'm still reading, actually, uh, this book. So I'm actually reading two books. One is uh, a book that my CEO recommended to me. It's called Challenger Sales. And uh, I'm really enjoying this book because even even though I consider myself, you know, a sales expert and I've been through a lot of, you know, a blend of sales and marketing roles in my career, you you never stop learning. So this is a, a, a an approach of selling that's more applicable into the software business, you know, into SaaS kind of environments. And it resonates very much, you know, with my current role. So Challenger Sales um, is the first one. And there's the second one is, um, it's a book by uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. So I was recently attending, you know, his uh, book promotion here in New York. 
and um, it's it's pretty much you know a like a personal self reflection um, in, in in his book that he calls Seven Tools for Life, um, and it's pretty much, pretty much inspiration. This is one of the you know light books that you go through you know a few days, and it resonates a lot a lot with anybody who like myself as you know an immigrant came here to the United States and tries to find you know it's uh, his path to happiness and success. So yeah, those two books I would uh, definitely recommend myself. Definitely awesome. Awesome. Thanks you so much for sharing that. Now, what is one single thing that Lucy Green is focused on at the moment the most? Um, we really want to help the cannabis industry thrive and succeed. It's really an industry that's so inspirational. It's so um, motivating that made me actually you know, quit my job uh, at a fantastic company such as Anheuser Busch, you know, and and, and join this team uh, at Lucid Green to to do what we do, uh, and that is, you know, enable the cannabis industry work smarter, better, synergize, and um, we're doing a great job so far. I want to say I'm trying to be very, you know, objective. So entering 2024, you know, the um, I think that the industry will have even more challenges uh, with uh, you know, new states coming in, uh, which is a blessing and a curse, you know, new states in terms of legalizing uh, both medicine and recreational cannabis. And we want to help all of those states. As I said, you know, find a way to standardization, find a way to join all the ac actors in the industry into one platform and, you know, share practices, you know, synergize, be very fluid in the ways of working. Uh, which uh, is is not really the case in cannabis, you know, overall. So I think that that's you know my purpose in in my career and everybody's purpose at Lucid Green. So that's that's pretty much you know what I would aspire to. Okay, awesome. Now, Philip, if there would be no boundaries in technology, what would be that one thing that you want to fix for your role as a marketer today? That's a very good question. Well. I think that you know, you know, in a world without tech boundaries, I'd really love to see some some sort of seamless integration of data across all marketing platforms, if that makes sense. So, I think that in the, if 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 we are to imagine this, it's like a unified ecosystem where customer insights, uh, analytics, engagement tools, all of all of them effortlessly, you know, communicate with each other. This would eliminate, I would say the current struggle of dealing with fragmented data, you know, and enhance with that the ability to understand our audience much better. So it's it's about breaking down the silos that currently exist and uh, really empowering marketers to make data-driven decisions more effectively, you know, and so ultimately, uh, you know, expecting to boost the effectiveness of any campaign and, you know, the strategies overall. Definitely. All right. Awesome. Now, if there's one repetitive task that you could automate, Philip, what would that be? I'll be very honest, I really don't have any of those kinds of repetitive tasks, and I'm very grateful for that, but I definitely do need to improve my organizational skills. So anything that helps an organization, you know, I'm all up for it. Okay, awesome. Now, uh, like you mentioned, you do have a lot of experience. We were talking about it, Coca-Cola, I, I watched your push. Uh, what is one piece of advice that you would give yourself if you were to restart your journey as a marketer today? Hmm. I'd say learn about technology as much as you can and as soon as you can. Really, for any marketer, tech is one of the best friends that you can that you can have. It's almost like a secret weapon. If you're tech savvy, you can be really great in your job. And if you're not, I'm sorry, but you'll eventually get outdated and probably even out of the game. Definitely great advice, Paul. So, love. thanks a lot for being on the show with us today. I do want to give you the last word. If someone forgets everything about the interview today, what is that one thing they should remember about Lucid Green? We are changing the game, not only in cannabis, but uh, overall, because technology is the only thing that's not constant. So I'm, I'm not going to speak too much. I think that the best way to really understand what we do visit our website, lucidgreen.io. I think it's not only 
educational, but also inspirational uh, when it comes to what we do. So sooner or later, our technology, our lucid ideas will come to the hands of, uh, of people. And uh, I think that uh, people would really agree with our mission and hopefully join us, you know, in supporting what we do. Awesome. Well, Philip, thank you so much for, for giving us the opportunity to present Lucid Great at here at PathMonk Process. To our listeners, thank you so much for tuning in and looking forward to our next episode at PathMonk Presents. Thanks a lot, Philip. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure.